Okay, honey, let me get that straight. You want the keto plate, which consists of 12 slices of bacon topped with MCT oil and some sauteed kale with a little bit of butter. Is that right? Ugh. Well, honey, you told me you were on the keto diet. Don't y'all eat 12 slices of bacon and a bunch of kale? No. Gang, we are bombarded with these must-have keto foods that sometimes taste terrible, but quite frankly, they're crazy expensive. And then we feel guilty. And then a whole bunch of marketing messages hit us. So we spend the money, we feel guilty, and we don't like it. So today I'm gonna cover some keto foods that you never have to eat. Cause your girl right here, Shelly, the keto dietitian does it. Well, my name is Shelly. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm a keto dietitian. And to learn more about me and the switch that I made from that God awful plant-based lifestyle that nearly killed me, go ahead and watch our video. But I'm ready to jump in and tell you the keto foods you don't have to eat. Number one is kale. Now kale, I think kale has seen its day. Kale is very bitter. Now if you love kale, awesome. But I want you to not feel guilty if you don't like kale. Kale has a couple of problems with me. Number one, it doesn't have a very long shelf life. If it's properly stored, raw kale will keep about five to seven days in the refrigerator, whereas cabbage does have a little bit longer of that shelf life. Kale is also bitter. And there's this kind of rule like, oh my gosh, if you massage kale, it will um, release some of that bitter and then it'll look wilted and get darker and I just don't feel like making love to my kale. I hate to break it to y'all, but I really, really don't. Then they say you can massage kale for about 10 minutes. I ain't massaging nothing that long. I'm kind of lazy when it comes to that. And kale is not the lowest carb green. Kale is about six grams of carbs in a cup. I prefer cabbage. I love to cook with cabbage. Kind of like I said, stored properly. It has a shelf life of about two weeks. And I did a, a recipe really long ago on my YouTube, on this channel for roasted cabbage steaks. Watch it and laugh at me. And I didn't have to massage it. I just cut it. I put a little oil, a little Redmond Real Salt on there. And it is delicious, four grams of carbs. The cabbage is the winner to kale. Number two is MCT oil. MCT oil is the must have of the keto diet, said 2018. It is part of the keto diet. It, it is great. The issues I have with it, again, is folks just add it to everything, including coffee. It just looks and tastes disgusting. My other problem is, is that folks will just dump it on there and excess MCT oil has kind of caused some gastrointestinal distress. In other words, you're gonna have the trots. So grab yourself a good, good magazine. MCT oil has also been picked up by a lot of ML LMs. You know, some of those folks scare you because they come back from high school and all of a sudden they're trying to talk to you. And it's really made folks in my clinic feel pretty guilty. Like, oh my gosh, I don't like MCT oil. Do I have to do it? Either because maybe their best friend's selling it or they just don't like the film that forms around the coffee cup. I don't like it. I really wish, you know, a lot of the keto influencers would stop saying you have to have MCT oil. If you feel that way, start off gradually. But gang, remember, we can use olive oil, we can use great avocado oils, which are amazing sources of omega-3. We could also use a little bit of heavy whip in our coffee. So please don't feel guilty if you just don't like it. The other thing that you can do is the powder, the MCT powder, instead of the actual liquid, is much softer and more gentler on the stomach. The powder also doesn't kind of give that oil film, but for me, it just doesn't work. So don't have any kind of guilt about it. The next one is Bang Energy Drinks. Oh my Lord. This is another product that is on the social media platforms like crazy. If you type in keto, if you type in energy drinks, I promise Bang is gonna come on up. I have a lot of personal issues with uh, Bang and I have a lot of, you know, nutrition issues with Bang. I don't appreciate Bang using very young women who barely wear anything to market a drink. And that's my personal opinion. You do not have to have it and that is okay, but it's really the caffeine. Bang has more caffeine than check this out Two Starbucks double shot energy. It has more caffeine than that five hour energy drink. I really, have a soft spot for those folks who overdo caffeine because my sweet, sweet husband 
did used to drink the five hour energies. He had this really scary heart episode when we were in clinic and um, he got really jittery and really jumpy. And the cardiologist was like, I need you to get off this caffeine stuff. So just be super careful. If you need caffeine, you know, drink your simple cup of coffee. If you need an electrolyte drink, look at Ultima. The next one is also very difficult to discuss and that is vodka. This is a very hard conversation I have for individuals. I don't know how this happened. And I get it, we like to enjoy a nice drink. For some reason, people think a clear drink is calorie free and carb free. It's not. It's not, it is low carb. And there are a lot of low carb cocktail YouTube channels. I get it. This is not making fun of folks. And I do believe in enjoying a glass of wine here and there. I do, I have one on Friday and Saturday night. Typically speaking, again, typically speaking, we have more than one. And I've seen really, really good people have more than one and have more than two and have more than three. So please, I, I really don't have an alternative. I, I do push fit fine, but I don't want you to have two or three glasses of that as well. I encourage if you're gonna have a mixed drink, sip you know and really connect with professionals if you feel like this has turned into a problem where we're doing more than one a night our next one is sparkling beverages if you don't like plain water sparkling water is a good alternative to sugary sodas and fruit juices that's what we've been taught the entire time of our lives by dietitians well the problem is is that some of our sparkling waters may contain a little bit of sugar alcohol, but really carbonation can cause us to experience some glass and bloat. And really, if you're noticing this, I tell folks when you're following a great diet, cut out that sparkling drink and see what happens. Switch over to plain water. Getting gassy every time you drink it and you burp, that's not good. Nobody, nobody wants to hear you burp and nobody wants to hear you fart. And speaking of farting, our next one is maltitol. I chatted about this sugar alcohol before. Me and maltitol are like a really bad Jerry Springer relationship. Maltitol and I are kind of like your first boyfriend in high school, which sounds so great. And you think about it now and you're like, hmm. Maltitol is not sugar or calorie free. A lot of times when we think of sugar alcohols, we think of sugar free, calorie free. I can have as much about it as I want to. They throw it in products because let's be honest, it's delicious. And then it can cause those problems for us of the gas, of the bloat watch out i do not eat bars and one of the reasons i don't eat bars is because they do have a lot of maltitol in them so my biggest qualm is for folks you know hey stay away from the sugar alcohol or maltitol snacks and go for something just plain and natural your 20 nuts those items because look maltitol although it is a sugar alcohol it's glycemic index is higher than most, meaning that it has an effect on our blood sugar levels. And this can affect whether we're in ketosis or not. So these are not a good idea, not only because you're gonna have a car, car crash in your draws, but also because we might see a shift in your blood sugar levels. Maltitol is a 35 on the glycemic index scale. Your erythritol is zero. Check the label on your favorite bars, treats, keto snacks if you're ordering something from a local keto bakery ask if they have maltitol in there because if you don't you may be having a meeting in the bathroom number seven is chicken breast and i know that some of y'all think that's crazy y'all are like wow that's a lean protein chicken breast was taught to me in school as the best lean protein ever but I just wanna tell y'all, you can eat the thighs and wings. Thighs go great in the slow cooker. Wings are absolutely amazing in the air fryer. You can still have the breast, but man, when I eat like, you know, chicken breast from a restaurant, cause that's what we used to always teach, order chicken, you know? And I would take a bite of it. It was, it was dry and funky and icky. So again, Wings in the air fryer, absolutely amazing. Very fast to cook. You're looking at a meal in under 30 minutes. Thighs in the slow cooker, super juicy, super amazing. It is okay for your meat to have some flavor and to have a little bit of, you know, just that good feel where you don't have to worry about 
having some plain boring chicken breast and green beans. And for a fun guide to follow on my foods that I love to choose for my seven day keto and anti-inflammatory meal plan, I want you to scroll into the description. You can download that to your inbox and continue on because I want you to know why I threw out the standard American diet and embraced a keto and low carb lifestyle. I want you to click right here so you can watch that and I send you as always much love. Mwah.